In this video, I'll be taking a critical look between the destroyer and the cruiser. And along the way, I will challenge you with some basic battle scenarios where you can test your deductive metal. In particular, I want to see two factors. One, unit capability. Two, the cost effectiveness. Can this unit succeed in combat? Is this unit worth the cost? Let's look at the base numbers for each unit. The destroyer has a cost of eight and both an attack and defense of two. It has a special capability of anti-submarine warfare. The cruiser. It has a cost of 12 and both an attack and defense of three. Its special capability is offshore bombardment. Let's take a look at builds with equal cost values. Destroyers at eight, cruisers at 12, with an IPC build of 48. That's going to give us six destroyers and four cruisers. Now let's test combat effectiveness. Who's gonna win this naval engagement? I suggest you try this without an odds calculator, go with what you see on the board, as you're likely going to make the same choice in a live game. This is more than just pick a side, see if it wins. In a live game, you need to determine the results of combat before you commit to one. There are three critical questions you have to ask when you're playing this live, and you have to do this all on the fly. Who wins the battle, the attacker or defender? What is the win chance, 40%, 50%? What remaining units are left on the field? Ready? If you already know who's gonna win the battle, then you should have mentally calculated your odds of pointing. What's your win percentage? Did anybody pick 50% because costs are equal? Did you pick anything close to 80%? 80% for who? Did you pick the correct side? Will the attacker win or the defender? The attacking destroyers win this battle 77% of the time. Now what's left on the battlefield? The defender's gone. How many destroyers remain? Two of the six survive the battle. Let's take another look at costs. Perhaps that initial battle was unfair to the cruisers because although the costs were equal, the unit count was not. Destroyers cost eight, cruisers at 12. Let's drop the build value by half with an IPC build of 24. With this build value, the unit count is not gonna have as much of an effect on the outcome. That gives us three destroyers, two cruisers, a more even match on unit count. Let's see. Now let's see the combat effectiveness between these two sides. The ship counts are very close with three versus two. The same three questions. Who wins the battle this time, attacker or defender? What is the win percentage? What remaining units are left on the field? Are you ready? What's your win percentage? Did you pick 50% because of equal costs and the small unit counts? If you pick 70%, then you had this correct. However, did you pick the correct side this time? Did the attacking destroyers win or did the cruisers clearly take this victory? Attacking destroyers win this battle 72% of the time. Final question is how many destroyers remain? Well, in the previous build of 48 IPCs, two destroyers survived. In correlation, this build of 24 IPCs, one of the three destroyers survived the battle. There seems to be a pattern here. Let's take a deeper look into the numbers. The rule of 1,000. 1,000 is a statistically relevant number where the change or the margin of error doesn't significantly alter past that count. But in more simple terms, I ran the battle with random dice 1,000 times to see a non-theoretical result. The attacking destroyers win this battle 748 times. Effectiveness is my derived calculation where I base the difference of enemy IPC value lost versus my IPC value that survived. In this case, the attack is 90% effective, which means it causes more damage the unit loss and IPC loss to the opponent. 
the most likely loss of IPCs is really just a numerical way of seeing how many units didn't survive, and the inverse would be how many did survive. On average, the attacking destroyers lose 32 IPCs, which equates to four ships. And so they have 16 surviving IPCs, which means two ships survive. Some of you don't care about this stuff, so let's move on to general percentages. Destroyers win the engagement 77% of the time. Nice and simple. Your chance to wipe all enemy units, whether you win the battle or draw, happens to also be 77. Economic success is weighted at 65% to the attacker's favor. Capture of the sea sonar territory is at 74. The large point here is that these battles, all of them, fall to the destroyers in all categories. BBR, the bloodbath rule set, has made an adjustment to the cruiser with combined arms. At the bottom of the combined arms card, it shows that a cruiser matched up with a battleship, one to one, in defense only, the cruiser will defend at four instead of three. Now, what does your internal general think about that change? How do you think it's going to impact the current imbalance between destroyers and cruisers? Is it going to balance them? Well, let's go take a look. Costs. Destroyers cost eight, cruisers cost 12. We change the build value to 44. That gives us three destroyers and two cruisers. Remember that this battle is 72% favored towards the attacking destroyers. But now we're going to be adding plus one battleship to each side. And the battle is now set. Ready? Let's go. The ship counts are very close with three versus two. And the additional battleship on both sides really puts a wrench into any mental calculations. Remember, there are three questions. Who wins the battle this time? The attacker or the defender? What is the win percentage? And what is the remaining units left on the field? Are you ready? What's your win percentage? It was 72% without the battleships. Does it stay at 72? Well, if you picked anything near 64, then you had it correct. However, did you pick the correct side this time? Did the attacking destroyers win or did the cruisers win because they get that extra fire at four? No, nope. the attacking destroyers win the battle 64% of the time. Well, what's left on the field of battle? How many of the destroyers remain? Similar to the previous battles, one of the three destroyers survive. And depending on your order of loss, the damaged battleship could get added to the survivors. So what are we seeing here? What's wrong with the cruisers? Why did the destroyers keep winning these contests? In order to see, we're gonna to have to look back into the numbers and take a little deep dive. Let's go. The rule of a thousand. Previously, we were looking at 748 wins. Now we see the destroyer win count at 595. The cruiser defensive bump has made an impact in the results. But the question that we have to ask ourselves, is it significant enough to matter? In effectiveness, it's at 90%, but the defender's effectiveness jumped to 89. Since prices haven't changed, this is due to the value of the battleship. So let's move on to probabilities. The straight victory is at 64% for destroyers. Cleaning out the enemy is at 66. Economic success, as noted, is equitable between the sides, but it's primarily based on the battleship. Capture of the territory drops down significantly to only 35%. Now this is due to order of loss imposed. And if a damaged battleship defends at four, or as in BBR, it defends at two. Well, what happens now when people stop buying the cruiser and only start buying destroyers? <laughs> What
What's the simple fix to cruisers? Drop the price by two, or increase the price of the destroyer by two. Cruisers cost 12, destroyers eight. You can drop the cruisers by one and increase the destroyers by one, and then you cover the two IPC spread. Or you can just drop the cruiser down to the value of 10. There is an alternate fix. If you take the more interesting combined arms route, two cruisers. For each pair of cruisers, they each attack and defend at four. Now you might think, oh no, wait, that's way too far in the other direction. Well, let's take a look at the results. The stats break down for every 1,000 combats. This was run 32 times for a total of 32,000 combats. The destroyer swarm win percentage drops down somewhere between 48 and 49%, with 49% being mode. That's down from 77, down from 72, down from 64 at its best. 49% is an even matchup in my book. If you go with combined arms for cruisers, where each pair get to roll at four in both attack and defense, there is a sweet spot. Two cruisers are a must to keep that 51.5% cost-effective benefit. They're just more advantageous. Three cruisers keeps the double at four dice rolls alive with a casualty to spare. Now the order of loss is handled and how it's handled gives the cruiser team more tactical selectivity. Maybe take a fighter hit over your double CCs at four. There's more options, more things to consider, and there's more balance.